repair of everyday broken objects is perhaps not something that many of us undertake these days. Precious family heirloom might get a chance of being sent to a professional conservator. However, due to lack of skill, knowledge, materials, and or time to repair everyday objects, most of us find it easier to find replacements instead. Museum objects often bear historical evidence of having been broken as well as having been repaired. Historic repairs are important in understanding objects. They form part of an object's intrinsic identity and history. We can learn how techniques of repair have evolved, reflecting various geographical locations and periods of time. No matter how crude or how beautiful, a repair reflects a person's attempt to save a significant object. When examining repairs, we often find ourselves marveling at human ingenuity. This 12th century Korean ewer, a vessel more commonly known as a jug or a pitcher, has a repair that may seem to be, at least to European eyes, an unusual approach to fixing a broken object. The gold you can see at the top and sides of the handle has not been applied for decoration in its pure sense, but as a repair, known as kintsugi. When a prized ceramic is damaged, it is mended using lacquer called arushi, made from tree sap. The process of joining all the broken pieces together must be done correctly and all in one go, as it is not possible to correct mistakes. The resin is left to harden for a few weeks before then being sanded down. The repair is embellished with gold or silver metal foil. Gold is usually preferred as it doesn't tarnish and it doesn't taint food. The Kintsugi approach to the repair of objects is connected to an aesthetic philosophy called wabi-sabi, which encourages appreciation of imperfection. Attracting attention to the broken state of an object by illuminating its cracks, Kintsugi repairs give an object a new lease of life, perhaps even in a more glorious form than it had possessed. From glorified repairs, let's move to repairs which are designed to be not noticed. Do you remember an incident in which three of our 17th century Chinese vases were accidentally knocked over by a visitor? The area was cordoned off and was like a crime scene where photos were taken to record the relationship of the fragments to one another. The flagstones of the floor were given numbers and all fragments were collected in a very strict and systematic way into 24 trays. The task of reassembling these vases was undertaken by Penny Bendel, a ceramics conservator contracted by the museum to work solely on this project. It took seven months to complete. In this instance, the aim of Penny's work was to repair the vases in such a way that the damage would not generally be noticeable, but also to not hide the damage, nor to over-restore and falsify the object. All of the fragments had to be cleaned thoroughly, especially around the broken edges, so that when reassembled and reattached with adhesive, the join lines would not draw attention. If you look closely, the fragment joins and filled in areas are visible, but from a distance, it is quite difficult to tell that these vases were once smashed into hundreds of pieces. In both examples, precious ceramics have been broken, but preserved, yet the approaches are different. Which do you prefer? Should a repair hide itself? Or should the object bear its scars with pride? Experiment with infilling techniques to make your own work of art. Take a picture from a magazine or a newspaper and tear it into pieces. Reassemble the pieces on a sheet of colored paper or card so that the background color shows along the cracks. Remove some of the pieces of the image and create your own infills. You could try to copy the original piece of the print as closely as possible, fill the area with a pattern, or add an element from another image. 